Today on Suncoast View, Tropical Storm Emily was not much of an event, but if the big one ever comes our way, experts say we may not be okay. We will discuss. And it's back to school week, and today we'll talk about sleep schedules, ADHD, and lunches your kids will actually like. Plus, there's some very talented fashion photographers right here on the Sun Coast. We'll take a look at the future stars developing at Ringling College. All that and more right now on Sun Coast View. Welcome to the show and welcome back to our good friend Megan Greenberg. Great welcome. to have you with us. Thank you. you didn't bring the baby, but she brought pictures. You, yes. Oh, we can always, always find some yeah. pictures. Baby Arlo always. is one of our favorite little <laughs> oh, guys. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you took him out into the Gulf paddle boarding? Wow. Yep, and then I just left him and said, good luck, kiddo. put a you note on this. him and said, please return. Yep. Did he like it? He did. He actually he really liked the water, and then he was a little unsure about the paddle board, but then he came to love it. So oh, wow. Yeah. What a great idea and apparently and he drives yeah oh my. i just you know i just want to sit in the back and text so i'm having him <laughs> cart me around town and uh he's doing pretty he's good so far very smart kid yeah the braking and uh, gas is a little tricky <laughs> a little tricky yeah. we could probably we'll get him get some finger control Another year or two yeah you know that you say that that's why i thought about having kids so i have like a little <laughs> yes. a little person to tell things to do yes. for me and you know, as you get older it never too worked like, out that way i was no. just gonna say let me know how that works because i tell mine to do something and they look at me like i have three heads oh, so. It's not, it's not like a, a built-in maid. It's not. It's not the mini me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and when it is the mini you, it's probably not the ways you want it to no. be the mini you. <laughs> Mine developed the mouth, of course, so lucky me. Well, Linda, welcome back. Yes. We haven't seen you, all of us, together since your vacation last week. That's because of the weather yesterday, we did not get to air our real show. So we wanted to see what you were up to on vacation. Tell us what oh, you were doing with the kids. Oh, my four grandchildren and my son came from Atlanta with his eight-year-old and seven-year-old. And my daughter came from down the street <laughs> with her seven-year-old and four-year-old. So I spent one entire week with my grandchildren and, of course, my son and my daughter. We went to St. Pete Beach, and it was awesome. They loved it. There oh, we are. I love that watching picture. a movie. Your we granddaughter are, is like posing in that last picture. Uh -huh. she's yes, she's a the eight year old. Supermodel. Yes. She yes. considers herself superior to the younger ones, <laughs> yes. I can tell. <laughs> but she cried all the way home to Atlanta and oh. was begging to come oh. back before she even got home. So they had a good time That's and I got wonderful. to know them very, very well. Oh. And no, they didn't do everything I told them to. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that Kids works. So yeah. well we are glad you are back and those pictures are absolutely precious. And just a welcome Welcome back to all of you. A tropical storm, Emily, sort of postponed our production of our show yesterday. So we've got lots of things planned for today, and we g we move on. Yes, <laughs> it's one of those funky starts to the week, but we're glad it is Tuesday. All right, we're also glad to see empanadas by Steph in the kitchen today, and Stephanie herself is there to teach us how. Uh, tell us what kind of empanadas we'll be working with. Oh, today we're going to be making margarita empanadas. They're oh. mozzarella, basil, tomato, a nice, cool summer flavor. Ooh, I oh. like that. That now. does sound great. Tell me quickly, how many flavors do you do in an average week? Uh, we make a total of 26 flavors. Oh, wow. my. That's a lot of ingredients. I don't even sure know that is. many flavors. I, <laughs> I couldn't know. name that many. That's amazing. All right, well, we look forward to joining you. Mm -hmm. And empanadas are certainly a nice treat that we have here on the Sun Coast. I also want to say... It's our day, ladies, all of us. Yeah, it is it. National Girlfriends Day. Oh, and I thought that was definitely one we should celebrate together. So we found some pictures of some of the more fun things that we have done together. Some of them more embarrassing than others. <laughs> Linda, do you remember baiting the hook? I never thought I would bait a hook. And there you guys talked me into killing, kill, <laughs> murdering a that. shrimp. Was it a shrimp? Yeah. It was some kind of little creature I doubt it that was alive. And the best part was climbing into the boat. Remember, we had to go up a ladder. It took all of Roll us to get over. each other in it. It yeah. was not graceful. We did not do it on camera. But I love the look on your face in that picture. This is another great one. This, we have reptiles with us. Thank you, Marsha. And, Bobeth, that is a large one in your lap. Yes, I remember And, and you look like you're happy. enjoying. No, way. that was the opposite. Yeah. Stephanie, it looks like you're talking to your snake. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to keep it from doing anything bad. Uh, <laughs> we dress as firemen here. We have no shame in our game whatsoever, so Bobeth and I are very well prepared. I like that one. That's kind of key and crucial good. when we're in the kitchen. We should probably have our fire protective armor <laughs> on. Uh, Linda and Bobeth, you make a lovely couple dancing together there. Why, thank you. We should have done some Photoshopping on that picture. 
<laughs> Look how I would like it better it. if I were smaller. Thank you very much. No, that is a great picture. So we have no problem dancing together. And I love this. This was one of our favorite field trips when Mickey Williams was in town. And we all got locked in jail and had yeah. to escape. Yes. Yes, it was a game. We went to play a game and figure out how we could get out of jail, and we did and it. We figured it out. Eventually, no, we I, didn't. I, I, I was going to say, you're them. remembering more positively than yeah. I am. We could figure it out. I we have had that to come memory. and give us tips. Yeah, no, we had, to, yeah. we had to be sprung from that jail. Yeah. That was the escape room, and we did not escape. So, yeah. you know, but lots of fun. So we're glad you're here. You know what I've learned from in. this show? It's never too late to make good girlfriends, because here, we didn't really know each other yeah. three years ago when we started doing this. We were three straight. Strangers. And now I consider you guys some of my best friends. So Aww. this has been a wonderful girlfriend experience. I think that's one I of agree. the things I've learned too. Because even though we worked with each other and we've seen each other at mm -hmm. work and just we would just come here, work, leave. But now we have a, like a bond. We actually interact with each other off camera. We it's text amazing. each other when mm -hmm. we're not here about yeah. events happening in our lives and Did check you on make each your other. Flight? Did you make your <laughs> flight right? Did you get up this morning? <laughs> Are you going to be okay? So no, it is National Girlfriends Day. I can't think of better people to celebrate with. Congratulations! So. And we're pulling you in with us. That's right. Come along for the Great. ride. It's always a good one. Don't you get me? <laughs> it is time for our first hot topic. And tropical storm Emily may have been a good wake-up call for our area. There's a very sobering story in the Washington Post last week, and it says we could be in serious trouble. Analysts say our metropolitan area is the most vulnerable in the United States to flooding and damage should a big storm hit. A World Bank study calls the whole Tampa Bay area one of the 10 most at-risk areas on the globe. The Post article reminds us that our area is due for a major hurricane, and if it is a direct hit, the damage would likely surpass Katrina and rack up $175 billion dollars in damage. How much do we worry about this? You know, back in 2004 when Charlie hit, when we had three hurricanes right in a row, I really worried about it. When we got a tropical storm, we taped up all of our windows. Mm -hmm. Then we found out tape doesn't do yeah. any good at all. Uh, so I would think, well, I need to get storm windows. But then we didn't have a hurricane, so I didn't do anything. Uh, so uh, it they just haven't hit here in a long, long time. And do we just think it is never going to happen? No, I don't think people. Know, they always say that 100 year storm or whatever the mm. year is storm, so we know it's going to eventually make it. So the thing is being prepared for it. And I, I think that's what happens when we get so complacent because mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. We don't prepare. Yeah. And what did hit here? I think it was 1921. Mm -hmm. And the. And the, at that time, where Marina Jack is now was City Hall. It was out in the bay. That's why City Hall is not there anymore. It washed it away. Right. It just came in and hit it. It sank Ringling's yacht. So it has hit here before. Uh, but it's been so long, and we've escaped so many times, like we did yesterday, that we just get very complacent. All right, Megan, you're a mom so now. Flooding. Are you ready? Do you have a hurricane yeah. kit? Leave. <laughs> Please, leave that's your plan. Yeah. Leave because as quickly as you can. At least for hurricanes, we get, do get yeah, the warning. Right. So exactly. if it is something, although Emily kind of surprised us, but uh, I can say I think it's the flooding that scares us. Even our neighborhood floods with a heavy rain. So yeah. I don't. The wind damage is of course scary, but mm -hmm. the it flooding has already surge. shown how yeah. uh, you know just how dangerous it can be with a light sprinkle. So. I'm, I'm sure we're due. But yeah. <laughs> I'm years sure after due. Charlie, I, mean, I had water, I had food, I could last a week in my house because I was prepared. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I have nothing. I could last three <laughs> weeks in our house at any time with at food. Any time. But <laughs> yeah, that's good. You're supposed to be like that. So, well, hopefully, that's people crazy. are paying attention. There was certainly some flooding just with yesterday's yeah, rain, so, so it's a reminder it can happen. Prolong storm for several hours. If this was oh, just yesterday's days, rain. Days. Yeah. Days. Yeah. 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 No, definitely a sobering thought. All right, so there's a new app on top of the most downloaded app list for both Apple and Google Play. Megan, I'm going to be curious to see if you have heard of this. It's called Saraha. I've never heard of it. But it is an anonymous messaging service that has become a huge teenage trend. Can you tell who's controlling these lists? <laughs> a potentially concerning trend as well. The app allows you to search for users you might know and then send them a message with without revealing your identity. It is allowing teens to tell each other things, both rude and racy, that they might not otherwise want to say. Now, there's been apps in the past, like Yak or Whisper like this. This app says it will not disclose users' identities without consent. 
You think this is scary or just like a high-tech version of the note in the locker or the burn book? Isn't this That's sad that it should scary. be scary? People should be sending each other notes saying, you look great today, and things like that. It would be wonderful. But instead, yeah, sure, everybody's going to send girl <laughs> notes that <laughs> say you look great today. Yes, <laughs> in, in not so many words, right. perhaps. I have a feeling that <laughs> but you can well, understand. Right. Yeah. What I don't get is what is the big deal about being anonymous? If you're yeah. going to send the message, at least own up to it. Like, yeah. why would you want to send rude or even positive message to someone and not well, say because who it is? think about how people are. You know, if you've got hate in your heart or you're just having that kind of day. Well, if I hate you, you I want you to know I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, most people aren't that brave. Well, what is the purpose of hating if you don't let the person <laughs> they don't know? know you hate them. This is when I know I'm old. When we were talking about this this morning, I was like, well, we used to stick notes in people's lockers. Like, ooh, I think you're cute. Uh -huh. Or, ooh, I hate you. Or whatever yeah. it is. It's the same concept. But it's yeah. not because it's a different day and age. It, it just is. is. It and is. I think even if you're being sweet, we've created a culture where you hide behind your computer. You can mm -hmm. hide. So it just continues to distance the user from the experience in a lot of ways. And you can say terrible things yeah. about and no accountability. Really. You know, like a shy girl telling a cute boy that she likes him. You know, it might be sweet or used for yeah. good, but even then it's allowing people to disconnect from the ownership. But it's, of mm -hmm. but it's still no accountability right. because even if you love the person or want to say something positive, you should be you should want to feel that, that vulnerability mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm telling you something that's going to make me get butterflies, right. but that's a good feeling. I know, but at yeah. 14, uh, you know, and at 15, <laughs> yeah. kids just aren't there yet. But they're all that negative? I don't yeah, think we were all that there's negative. There's a lot of no, negative it's, these it's days. Different. We need to do something about that. We need to change that. that negative Let's behavior. Let's cut all those apps off. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one way to handle it. The 2028 Summer Olympics will be in the U.S. in Los Angeles. So it's getting mixed reviews after prior city hosts have complained about big financial issues as a result of the games. But experts say this one should be different. The plan relies on existing venues, such as the Staples Center and the Coliseum, and it also avoids spending the billions to construct any new arenas. Further savings will come from housing athletes and the media at UCLA and USC rather than building expensive villages under deadlines. All right, Linda, you live there. Can LA oh. handle this? Oh, the roads are now just deadlocked. You can't move in the in the roads. It used to take me way back then to go to my station, Channel 11 downtown. We lived 35 miles away. It took me two hours to get there. Did you Even cover the night. Atlanta Olympics in 84? Uh, was that 84? No, it was later than that. 94, no. maybe. Yeah. I can't remember. No, that was six. No, I, I think I was down okay. here. I was, I was at this you station. You were already with, here when yes, Atlanta, when yeah, because from the traffic standpoint, Atlanta certainly has plenty of problems, but they were able to survive it. If they added new roads, I mean, though. If L.A. doesn't add roads, and they can't. They don't have the space. Maybe this is a reason L.A. should add roads anyway. Yeah. So uh, it'll be, but there's you no know, place. But where are they going to put them? They're going to put them on the other side. That's what I need. They need rapid transit. That's what they need, rapid transit. Yeah, where are they going to put the people? I mean, I understand the, the coliseums exist and the housing exists, but there's going to be people coming that need to move from point A to point yeah, B. Yeah, that the traffic is but what I, concerns me. But I question me. the housing too because we've all been to college dorms. So are you telling you t putting world class athletes in college dorms? College dorms aren't the nicest thing. Yeah, I think they have some good be. ones. I was going to say I suspect that it's nice. a pretty high level there, but I don't, I don't know. know because yeah. from what we heard from Brazil, the housing was a disaster there anyway yeah. so maybe this is an upgrade well it'll be interesting but it will be right <laughs> here i don't want to go States. out there at that time because you're not going to be able to move we nominate bo Beth will go cover it for <laughs> us. all right thanks. <laughs> all right we're going to check out our happy hour forecast and when we come back a sleep doctor helps us get back to school bedtimes in check good afternoon i'm chief meteorologist bob harrigan and we are still watching and tracking what's left of emily as it heads off into the atlantic right now it's being sheared apart it's still a tropical depression, as you can see right there. Top winds are at 30, pressures coming up. But more importantly, look to the left of that and to the west of Sarasota. That's an old frontal boundary, and it continues to cause some problems here tonight. Get a look at that large area of heavy rainfall headed in our general direction. So we're going to see that continuing to push our way. Should be uh, on shore in the next uh, three hours, I would say. So about uh, three hours from now. We'll see if it holds together. Right now, there's no uh, really severe weather with it or any kind of ex extensive lightning with it, but nonetheless, some moderate to heavy rainfall. And with the ground saturated, that will cause some flooding problems and concerns. So we'll watch that. Lots of flooding along the east coast near Miami. You see that large area of showers and storms with a little troughiness heading into the system of Emily. The dry air is slowly getting out of here, and we're starting to moisten up again. We'll have much more in the forecast and the tropics today at 5.
You might not think of the Sun Coast as a high fashion area, but Ringling College is changing that. Ringling offers fashion photography as a part of their photography and imaging curriculum. And instructor Tom Winchester is here to showcase their work. Oh, this sounds great. I want to come back to school. Oh, great. Thank you. You should come. <laughs> Tell me about your overall program before we make any decisions here about your photography and imaging program. The, the photo program is really amazing. Um, the, f the photo program starts with lens-based, which is basically uh, basic camera controls, and it can teach you anywhere from commercial photography, which is more like the fashion, mm -hmm. or if you're an artistic person, then uh, you'll learn the art world. Sounds like fun. Now, you are a professor. Tell yes. me about your classes. What are you teaching the students? Um, well, I taught um, lens-based fashion, which is great, mm -hmm. and then I also taught uh, studio lighting and location lighting. And fashion photography, my background is in fashion. I was on uh, photo shoots as a production assistant and a photo assistant for Vogue, Italian Vogue, Harper's, wow. this kind of stuff. Wow. Super cool, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I'm trying to bring that experience to the students so that when they came through the fashion class, if they were on set for the largest ones, they'd know what they're doing. All right. So, so this is a cutthroat business we hear. Yeah. It's, it's a jungle out there. Right. So how do you prepare them for that kind of competition? Well, you know, the, the, the number one thing I wanted to do with this class was to bring in local professionals. So during class, uh, I don't know, you just saw the video, uh, students shot with uh, hairstylists, makeup artists, uh, wardrobe stylists, local models. And one of the results of the class was that uh, the students networked with these people, and it's the network that's really going to um, mm -hmm. keep them going in, in, in their career. So how do you teach them to take care of the hard part, the competition, that uh, everybody <laughs> is fighting for the, the same job? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, the drive. You, you know, you know it's, it's, it's great that you asked that, because uh, one of the goals was to develop a personal portfolio. Mm -hmm. Because in, you know, with, in, in a world where everybody's running around with cameras on their phones, mm -hmm. it's going to be the portfolio and the personal style that, at least in my view, sets uh, these kids apart. And taking pictures can be so difficult. Like, what is there an eye? Is it something you have to have? You know how some people always say you have to have an eye to do it? Or is that something you can learn? Well, I, 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 I think both ways. I, I, I feel like talent exists. But mm -hmm. in, in the class, it was just come in. If you come in with a camera, then uh, the setting will be such that when you're done, you will have a portfolio. Wow. So everybody in, in this class, in, in my view, succeeds. Yeah. And are you learning the actual basics? I mean, from what we do for a living, we all have a pretty good eye on what the end result should look like. But I just bought myself a great camera. Right. I think it's really hard to use. Yes, I mean, there's is. like 800 yes, different settings on it. Do these classes break it down so that, you know, they're able to work with every level of equipment based on where they might be when they graduate? Yes, definitely. You know, the, the, the program overall, if, if, if you have an interest in photography and you want to be a photographer and... You can come in with very little experience, and that's what lens-based communication, the very first like freshman sort of very first semester of freshman year class, mm -hmm. is something that everybody takes. And then you'll learn camera controls. Mm -hmm. After that, as a sophomore, you'll uh, take the other classes that I taught, which says studio lighting and location lighting, where you learn the basics on lights. By the time they get to the fashion class, it's basically more about, at least in my view, developing a personal style and a cohesive portfolio. Mm -hmm. So you get sort of, you know, it's an incremental process. As a mom, I'm mm -hmm. interested in, do they get jobs? Yes. Tell me about <laughs> some of your recent graduates. They do get jobs, <laughs> yes. Uh, one of our shining stars, uh, Jenna Pirazzolo, who just graduated, she's now working at HSN, which is really amazing. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is her shot of Phil, and Phil is one of the models that um, we collaborated with a local agency out of Tampa called Benz. Mm -hmm. And then this is also her image of Lisa Silvermore, who's been on this show several times. Mm -hmm. And she's super cool. So Jenna has an amazing style. This is uh, Ethan Early, who is now going to be a senior. His image of Sahar Muhammad. And then this is his same image of Jordan. These are local models. Sahar, after this class, also got repped by Benz as well. Wow. And you've got an event coming up. Yes, on Friday is the closing reception for the exhibition. So those images that you just saw, you should come and it's celebrate the students, celebrate uh, the amazing work that they did, and it's on Friday. And it'll give you some good ideas for your own photography. <laughs> yes, definitely. For more information, you can go to Ringling College's website. It'll tell you where, when, and how to get there. And next, we're going to talk to Dr. Jenny about ADHD.
For the last 18 years, Samantha's Friends has been assisting people along the Sun Coast who have been challenged by catastrophic illnesses or affected by autism obtain a service canine. We need your help. Please show your support by attending our annual Celebrity Gala brunch and fundraiser. Call Sammy Lee at 941-448-8558 for more information. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. So many possibilities worth exploring. Manasota Flooring. Looking for carpet? Look no further. Manasota Flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add-ons or extras. Unbelievable? Manasota Flooring can have in-stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Manasota Flooring today. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. And welcome back. Nearly 10% of school-aged children are diagnosed with some sort of attention deficit disorder. And ADHD can be a major contributor to poor school performance. But Dr. Jenny Wilkins from Age Vital Pharmacy is here with ADHD help for those already dealing with this. So let's say a, a child is diagnosed and they're on prescription drugs. Are there other options out there? Oh, there's 100% natural alternatives to it. And mommies and dads need to understand that children do not have to take these toxic pharmaceutical medications mm. that actually degenerate their little brain cells. So we have to, I'm a mom of four, so I'm very passionate about children all together. So I always tell moms, what is the root cause of their not being able to focus or your children just being, you know, super, super spastic? Because that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. misfiring spark plugs. It's an inability to digest certain types of proteins in your diet. Wow. So again, going back to the GMO foods. So then it's like, how do we isolate those chemicals that they're not pulling out of their foods and put it in a uh, in, into a nutraceutical, into a pharmaceutical grade vitamin mineral supplement? Well, and that's you brought what I've developed. some of the supplements here. Yep. Let's go through um, some and of the products. My kids are hyper. So, <laughs> so, so I have so to you know how to. Yeah, this I have is proven to, results. <laughs> All right, people so let's go know the when they're not one. taking their supplements. So I have my amino pro. Amino acids are the building blocks to everything. Okay, and if our foods are being tampered with, we're not pulling out those amino acids. Little children need brain food because that's what amino acids are. It helps them produce those neurotransmitters. That way their little spark plugs can get going and firing. And then how do we get those spark plugs firing? That's why I have the CBD tincture and the CBD capsules. I have okay. both of those in an oil in an oral form. I even have them in a rapid dissolving form where it instantly just dissolves underneath their tongue. So what I don't is have that there. They do. Yeah. So CBD, CBD helps make those connections and those spark plugs. So think of the brain uh, stem. There's like a bunch of wires in there. And if those wires are not firing, then amino acids aren't being utilized to feed, you know, for energy and mm -hmm. mood and for, mm -hmm. I mean, they feel like almost like they're too hyper-focused or they just feel really slow. They can't, uh, you know, look at something. A lot of children describe it as, I feel like there's a lot of trains running by. I can hear a thousand conversations at once and I can't figure out which, which conversation oh, to yeah. focus that, on. That's a great oh, that's yeah, hard. That's, yeah. yeah. So that's how my seven-year-old described it. You know, it's like, oh, well, that's a really good analogy. I'm going to use that. Bunch of little trains running around. Mm -hmm. so, so those amino acids 
and then the mito-CoQ10. Oh, okay. CoQ10 helps to transport the oxygen, you know, to the different cells where the spark plugs are firing. So these kind of, you know, go hand in hand. So you have the neurotransmission, you have the oxygen transportation, and then you have making sure that those spark plugs are firing so the connections can be made you know, systemically everywhere. So, so they parents can focus. have options. Yes. Oh, That's the bottom line. And you they don't have to go to Adderall, something. They can get off of Vyvanse. They can get off of the Ritalin. You're remembering that's actually inducing more psychosis in our children than benefiting them. Wow. Longer list of side effects. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. And you guys can get thank more you. information about all the different supplements at her store by visiting the location off Main Street in downtown Sarasota or going to their website. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. you goodwill yes because when i donate or shop at goodwill i am creating a job i am goodwill yeah yeah northland outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots all across the northland there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell we're going to find those stories and share them with everyone Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Watch ABC7 wherever you are. Just search ABC7 on your streaming device to keep up with the Suncoast from the comfort of your couch. Download ABC7 now to watch us on TV anytime you want. ABC7, we're here for you wherever you are. Welcome back to Suncoast View. We're going to check back in with empanadas by Steph in our kitchen. And Steph, may I understand that you have a storefront and another location. Tell us where we can find you. We sure do. Uh, we have um, a location by 41 uh, behind Trader Joe's, behind the Chili's in the plaza. And we also have a booth at the Farmer's Market at downtown Sarasota. And you're actually marketed under the pasta brand that your family owns, correct? Yeah, we're a family business. We all work together. Um, but we do keep things a little separate because I like to put all of my time into the empanadas. As well you should. All right, so look for pepperonata pasta and empanadas by Steph. We'll see you in the kitchen in a little bit. Bo Beth? Well, back to school season also means it's time to go back to filling lunch boxes every day. Lucky I don't have to do this. <laughs> but school lunches doesn't have to be a boring brown bag experience. And here to give us some Cool school lunch ideas that you can sink your teeth in is Lisa Brabinski, the owner of Hosted Gourmet. All right, so Lisa, you know, 
when you look at Pinterest and some of these other places, you see these cute things that people put together for school lunches. But are they actually really practical? Some are, some aren't. Uh, this is something that's easy that uh, kids can do. I feel like, you know, if you want to put your kids to uh, do pay, pack their own lunch, uh, while you go have a glass of wine, fold laundry. <laughs> wow, this, kids have changed. Yeah. <laughs> can you explain that concept yeah. at my house, <laughs> please? Right. So they can make them do it themselves. Yes, they're going to do it themselves, yes. Cool. Well, and then they get more interested in eating it once be, they've yeah, done it. They're going to be excited so. about it, and then mm -hmm. if they come home with money the next day, they did a good job. <laughs> they're oh, oh, they sold it. They sold their life. So you know how that works. Well, well they stole somebody's. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two happened. All right, well, you brought a couple different ideas um, about how to get the kids involved. So let's talk through some of them and, and how they can, you know, do some of it, and you guys can get a little break. Okay. So um, sandwich sushi is very simple. All you're going to do is cut off the crust like you would making a tea sandwich. Okay. I love that name. Because I know you have sushi all the time. That's the cutest. Absolutely. <laughs> it is a great idea. Um, Okay, <laughs> we're do, are we doing this right? And then, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, in their kitchen, sometimes they don't have rolling pins or kids mm -hmm. don't know what they yes, are. I don't. So, <laughs> I have so, a rolling pin. I, I'm the old fashioned type. <laughs> so, this is something you can use a glass out of your uh, cover. Big you can hands. use anything, but you want to make yeah, sure it's so clean. Use. So, I wrapped it with saran wrap and uh -huh. foil. Good idea. Okay. So, you just want to flatten it. Okay, so you're going to roll the bread flat. Yep. Okay. Or you can use your hands. Or you can bang it on your hands. <laughs> yeah. Bang it on She's all over it. <laughs> All right, so you're going to be making a pizza one. So okay. in this container, you can take um, a little bit of cream cheese, tomato sauce, and Parmesan. And Spread it on the whole thing? Yep, but no, you don't do want to put it to it. the very edge, because okay. think about but when you're going to roll it, it's yeah. going to... Um, it's gonna Goo out. Ooh, yes, thank uh, you. Thank no. you. The, the kids and then, would like that's the part this. mom then, gets when you're making it, by the way, when it goos out. Megan's going to be working with, if you have any dietary needs, kids that want to stay away from dairy, um, so this is more vegan based and so I put ranch powder into the homemade hummus. Oh. So you have that ranch flavor to it. You want to keep it kind of thin and okay. then oh, yours sorry, on the board. other side, you want to flip that over and you're going to do very light thin because we're going to do nutritional yeast. Okay, so while that? I have it. So you're going to put so nutritional so we're yeast on the outside? outside? No, yours is yes. Okay, okay. good. So now you're going to want to take some pepperoni, some cheese. You're going to you're going to want it to look like something okay, like that. So, so she's going to roll the up and put yeah, pepperoni. I mean, so, she so cut a little bit off? Um, I would cut it maybe in half, long okay. ways, so it's going to fit in there. And then yours is you're going to put the carrot and cucumber towards the end, and mm. you're going to roll it. Um, you want it to kind of stand out. It's a yes. great way to hide okay. veggies yeah. in a wrap like that. We don't need to hide the veggies. We love veggies. Um, <laughs> well, you're going to put it, it's, it's going to go this way. Oh, it's going to go that mm -hmm. way. Okay, so I should measure. So about You don't like have that. to measure. There's no rules. We're not, I always say, you know, that's why I'm I don't like to bake. Right. No cup of flour is going to boss us around okay. here. Okay. All right, so you're going to put that in over there. Okay. You're going to put your pepperoni in. Your cheese is going to mimic rice. There's so it goes just like this? However you want to do it. Hmm. That's going to be a little bit too much in yours. You want to take me? Yeah, you want to keep it all towards. You want to keep it all towards the end because you're going to roll, ah, and then okay, you want okay, things okay. to stick out. Well, this is Why? um, this is an amazing idea. I see how it's getting them to be involved, so I can see the kids getting engulfed in this and trying to make it just this right end. for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I can see that being inspiring for them to to make their own lunch. And then okay, they're excited to, to eat roll? it. Yes, they can we roll, roll it up. And roll do it I have up. everything? Well, while you guys yes. roll, we're going to start working on another one on this side. So you mm -hmm. brought wonton cups. Tell me how these work. Okay, so wonton cups, when you're making it um, in a cupcake pan, you want it, it's a vehicle, so you don't want things to run out. Uh -huh. So when you're putting it in, you want to make sure that like it's not like, you know, it's not sloppy. So you want to make uh. sure that it's, it actually can hold yeah, no, food. So, so, you, yes. so you so literally finish, put wong tongs in a cookie container yes. or a, a huh. not yes. cookie, what is this called? Yes, and when it pops, see Those this would is, be cupcakes. Cup this is <laughs> one where you don't want it to look like, see how it's not going to hold the oh, filling. Oh, right. And then the other one um, is I did with the wontons. Uh -huh. This is something you're going to send your children to school with, and they're going to make it tomorrow. You're in the kitchen here. by yourself making Okay, so stuff. you're going to send uh, them with get all out these of the little kitchen. goodies. I'm busy making your lunch. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you send them with the wontons? Yes. Empty. So yours, okay. yours is bacon. Have you ever made a bacon cup? No. No, but I'd so like to. You eat would it. take <laughs> you would good. take your bacon and you would layer it that way, and then you wrap it around, oh. and then you would take another one of these, put it on top. And put some what pressure on it. And oh it my put it goodness! In the Can now you come to my house and make some? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of things should we stuff okay. in our wine? So yours is going to be an Asian chicken salad because oh. um, kids do. I did a cooking class recently mm -hmm. in Palmetto, and they loved doing it. So you're going to do some lettuce, mandarin, orange, 
chicken, and then you have some mango ginger dressing. I wow. have to show off these containers. <laughs> these are the cutest little salad dressing things you will ever see. So that's what lunch. that is. Yeah, well, you could send anything, anything with it, but look, it's soft and squishy, too, so they're not going to break in their lunch boxes. These are adorable. Or adorable. If, if you get them back. Yeah. <laughs> if you get them back. <laughs> if you get, well, that's true. Right. This one is the bacon, so you can buy, if you don't want to make meatballs yourself, they have the frozen meatballs. So you want to hold up mm -hmm. a, one of the bacon, one that's not falling, yeah, and then one here, this one, it's not falling apart. It's more like a cup. Okay. Oh, Some of them didn't, cute. and then you can put the, there's barbecue sauce in here. Oh. So you can put the barbecue on the, the kid's going to make it, to, you know, tomorrow. Right. <laughs> so, cool. so these are the ideas that you make it home prepared and then let them take yeah. it to school and they And then there's it. cheddar cheese and fried onion oh, crunchies. Oh, I love this idea. And then, um, well, that makes lunchtime very fun for the kids. I can see why they can make money off of this. I would sell this at school. <laughs> so, so, okay, so, so you want to cut these in half. Okay. And you doesn't have to be perfectly even because it's sushi. You know, sometimes you pick up small pieces or big pieces. No, stand them up. Okay. Stand them up. Okay, mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe Perfect. I better go the other. All right. Yeah, there we go. Garnish. Look at we'll that. Garnish yes. around. All right. Well, you yes. guys keep working, but if you want to get more creative <laughs> oh, menu yes. and catering ideas, you can just go to Hosted Gourmet's website. They have all the good ideas for you, and I'm sure you have a Pinterest page to make us all like feel bad about ourselves that what we can't do. <laughs> no, no, we're not about that. <laughs> I do adult parties. Yeah, adults would like this. Lots of adult parties. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so thank much, you. Lisa. And next, a sleep doctor help us get back on schedule. We'll be right back. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously. But she knows how to have fun, too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile. And in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. From our studios on Florida Sun Coast, this is an ABC7 News Update. Hello, I'm Scott Dennis. Here's what we're working on now for 5 o'clock. The storm is over, but the damage is still evident in parts of the Sun Coast. How Emily left a mess for some homeowners in northwest Bradenton. And the plans for the new Venice Library are coming along when you can hear about the details and talk directly with the architects. Let's get a check on our weather now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Emily is leaving. Not much with it now. Some showers and storms. It is a tropical depression. Still top winds at 30. But look at this. That frontal boundary is still very active in the Gulf of Mexico. A large area of heavy rainfall moving in our direction. And looks like it will be arriving here in the next few hours. You can see a rather intense line of heavy showers and storms moving to the northeast at 10 to 15 miles an hour. We have the sea breeze front also very active inland uh, pushing off toward the east. We'll have all the details and all this wet weather at 5. ABC 7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. From a baby's first steps to walking your daughter down the aisle, so many of life's precious moments are spent on our feet, and every step you take contributes to a healthier heart. By walking briskly for just 30 minutes a day, you can lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. So join us and take the first step to a healthier, longer life. The American Heart Association. Life. Life is why. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055.
it's back to school time, and that means many families are going to need to get back on an earlier bedtime schedule. Pediatrician Dr. Jesse Wong from All Children's and Sarasota Memorial Hospital is here to help us switch our kids to their sleep schedules for school time. Oh, this sounds hard. We've got a week. School doesn't start for a week. When do we have to start changing them over? Well, the short answer is now. The oh, longer oh. answer is maybe even a couple of weeks ago. Oh, oh we're late already. <laughs> but there's still hope. There's definitely <laughs> still hope for getting them back. Yeah, at midnight last night, there was no hope in my house. Oh. No. <laughs> so you can do it a little bit at a time. Yes. For the absolutely. next week. <laughs> absolutely. It's, the point is that it needs to be gradual. If your children are having a later bedtime, then you want to move it back gradually to where you want it to be. And one of the keys to doing that is establishing a good bedtime routine. So mm -hmm. what do your kids like to do or your grandkids like to do before bedtime? Read a book. Read a book. That's a big one. Teenagers, not they so much. They want to eat at my house, <laughs> which probably isn't a good routine. So that's actually not a good routine. Yes, that's no, right. we're in big trouble. Late night snacks are not good for falling asleep. After mm -hmm. dinner, that should be it. If they want to have a glass of milk or something, that's fine. But they shouldn't be eating a late night snack, and especially not in bed. Well, uh, how much yeah, no. sleep should they be getting? Yeah, that's a question for little ones and for bigger ones. That's a great question. So, in terms of sleep, the American Academy of Pediatrics has come out with guidelines. So, for children ages 3 to 5, 10 to 13 hours of sleep. Now, that's not all at night. That also includes daytime naps because, as you all know, this age group does tend to nap. Kids ages 6 to 12 should sleep 9 to 12 hours a night, and 13 and up, eight to ten hours a night, wow. which might come as a surprise because think of how much our high school kids are Don't actually sleep. getting in terms of sleep. So a good rule of thumb for remembering this is your high schoolers need at least eight hours, your elementary and middle schoolers need at least nine hours, and pre-K at least ten hours and of sleep a night. Teenagers take 18 hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, they so much in the summer. It seems like they need to catch up because, you know, you look at some of these numbers and the kids are getting up at 6.30 in the morning. During school years. Yeah, elementary, high school, you know, all of them are up very, very early. That means their bedtimes need to be like 8 o'clock. 3 p.m. the day before. Yeah. <laughs> so no wonder they're tired. Yeah. Absolutely. How can you make teenagers sleep? <laughs> That's a very good question. So even for teenagers, a bedtime routine works. Mm -hmm. um, sleep hygiene is very important for teenagers. Our kids these days are doing everything in bed. They're on their tablets, they're on their phones, they're reading books and e-books. They are talking to their friends, they're doing their homework. All of these things make us associate our bed, not with sleep, but mm -hmm. with preparing for the next day. Right. The anxiety that goes along with the tests that they're wow. preparing for. Good point. The sports competition they're going to do. So it's hard to retrain their mind to relax and fall asleep in that environment. It actually well, sounds like what I have to do with a baby. It mm -hmm. sounds like you keep that going forever. There's a routine. We stick to it. We do these few things in a row. The crib, the bed is for the sleeping. It's we yeah. don't play in there. It's you know, so it almost actually sounds like extending whatever routine they You've did when they were go. a baby. Yeah. Just <laughs> keep it going. Well, what about catching up on sleep? I'm a big, you know, component uh, or a, per a proponent of that like I think that I can go without it and then catch up on the weekend is that something that's real <laughs> so we do accrue a sleep debt and every debt must be repaid so <laughs> okay. on oh. the weekends you might be able to catch up on a little bit but there's absolutely no way to catch up on all oh. that sleep debt that you've accrued during the week every day that you or a child isn't getting enough mm -hmm. sleep you are suffering in your performance on a day-to-day -day basis and your cognitive function and that can't, just can't be made up for on the weekend alone. The other bad thing about trying to catch up on sleep on the weekend is you're just messing up the sleep cycle for the following week. Oh. So my recommendation for getting kids back on schedule is if they're gonna have a holiday period or you know if it's the weekend don't let them sleep in more than two hours maximum Otherwise, they're just going to delay their bedtime more mm -hmm. and more mm -hmm. and be back where they started for school the following week. No. At, at what point do you need to see a doctor for sleep problems with kids? That's a great question. We see a lot of very vague symptoms from sleep deprivation. Some of those are behavioral issues. It can lead to obesity, depression, anxiety, headaches, which... If you're reading that, you might think, oh my goodness, that's everything. <laughs> so um, see a doctor if you feel like your child's sleep 
is impacting their daily function. If their grades are suffering and you're not sure why, if they are falling asleep during school, if their teachers are saying that they're inattentive during class, if you're considering a new diagnosis of ADHD, think about whether or not they're getting sufficient sleep before you see wow. a doctor about mm -hmm. that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And another thing is if you were considering a medication for your child, like over-the-counter melatonin or, or Benadryl, see your pediatrician first because their sleep troubles might be remedied just with lifestyle changes, not medication. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so good to know that there's something you can do. Absolutely. I have a doctor's question. Is it more important to see a pediatrician than, say, a family practice doctor about these kids' sleep issues? That's a great question. Uh, if you are established with a pediatrician already and they have a relationship with you, then absolutely go to them because they're going to know your child from those years of seeing them for all those well visits. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you've seen a family practice doctor all those years, that's good too. What I would discourage is going to minute clinics or walk-ins or right. urgent care with these issues because they're just not going to know your child. And they seem uh -huh. general, yeah, but yeah. not when they know your child. Yeah. 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 Well, it's so good to know that there's something you can do. And Absolutely. if you have more questions about your child or more questions about sleep issues, you can go to the Sarasota Memorial Hospital website for more information. Next, help for ADHD without prescription medication. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received J.D. Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. And now, for a limited time, get a $20 credit on any new line of service. Call 1-800-468-1930. Go to ConsumerCellular.com or visit a Target store today. Download ABC7's all-new official Suncoast weather app onto all your devices so you can stay informed wherever you go. With our full-featured all-new weather app, you can get weather alerts, interactive radar maps, current conditions, 10-day forecasts, traffic maps, and weather video from ABC7, all at your fingertips. And it's free. ABC7's all-new official Suncoast weather app, sponsored by Mr. Sparky. Just search Suncoast WX in the App Store and download yours today. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USAswimmingfoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. Welcome back. Okay, it's a big night for us here on the Sun Coast. We have Daredevil Bello Knock on America's Got Talent. In the second round oh, tonight, great. you may remember that when he made it through the first round, he told Judge Simon Cowell, the crabby one, that if he'd push him through, that he would shoot himself from a cannon up over the top 
of a helicopter. Oh, I'm sure he can do that. I sure don't know can. if he can. This was the sway pole in round one, and he's like, I'm not like everybody else. I just don't go up a sway pole. I dance up a sway pole. He designs the sway poles, and he did get pushed through to round two. I love the fact that when he was on the air in June in round one, my cell phone blew up because everybody Everyone knows there. we're friends with him, and they were like, oh my gosh, Bella's on TV. You've got to see it. So you will want to tune in to America's Got Talent. I know it's on the other network, but just for a couple minutes so you yeah. can see just Bellow. Bellow's part. Support Just Bellow's Bellow. part. That's right, because we're very proud of him, and we'll find out if he can sway those judges again into keeping our Sun Coast tradition alive on national TV. And, and can he really do this? I think he can I'm do sure it, but he will can. he? I'm just worried because everything he does is dangerous. It like, is. Who climbs it is. A uh, daredevil good. like Bellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and of course, Bellow will check in with us later this month. I have no doubt we'll get him back on the show, but we'll find we'll out, find out how we did it. Yes. All right, we're going to find out how we make empanadas with Stephanie in the kitchen. Stay with us. Start your day with a new Good Morning Suncoast team. Weekday starting at 5 a.m. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. From our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is an ABC7 News Update. Hello, I'm Haley Wilkes. Here's what we're working on for 5 o'clock. An upgrade that hasn't been done in 10 years. What the state of Florida is doing to make sure driver's licenses are more secure. Now taking a quick look at Sun Coast Traffic Watch. There is an accident in Sarasota. This is on Bayavista Vista at Hines Avenue. So do be careful in that area. Now let's head over to Bob. Another line of showers and storms approaching the west coast of Florida this afternoon. Uh, this again going to bring some moderate to heavy rainfall and an occasional lightning strike with the ground saturated. Could cause some additional problems with some street flooding, so keep that in mind. It's approaching from the southwest to the northeast at around 10 miles an hour. There are inland storms along the sea breeze front, but this again associated with that uh, frontal boundary that's out there in the Gulf of Mexico. Expect some uh, moderate to heavy rainfall in a couple of hours from now. More on that coming up at 5. See you then. ABC 7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422. 800-685-6422. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. If you're not in control, then who is? Live above the influence. ABC7, My Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch My Suncoast News wherever you are. On our live stream, on our newly redesigned MySuncoast.com.
and a brand new ABC7 My Suncoast app, powered by the Eye Associates, providing sight for life, featuring traffic maps and live radar, and dining with recipes in all the hottest Suncoast restaurants. Visit mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab to download the ABC7 My Suncoast app for iOS and Android. Coming up Wednesday at 4 on Suncoast View, our back to school week continues. We'll find out everything you need to know about going back to class in Manatee County, plus a look at scholarship opportunities right here on the Suncoast. A Suncoast pet treat company goes global. We'll learn about Einstein pets, plus a preview of Madagascar Jr. from the Players Theater Kids and the best sandwiches on the Suncoast in the kitchen. And we are here in the kitchen with empanadas by Steph. And I have to say, I have been following you for years. You see me every weekend at the farmer's market. <laughs> and what I notice is your empanadas now look different. You have these adorable little ways to mark what uh, what different flavor oh, they I are. Oh, yes, that's that's a I need to point out that you used to hand roll every single one. And how many different that's empanadas true. have you made? I've made over 150,000 in the last oh, seven years. Oh my God! Could be in the Guinness World Book. <laughs> yeah, so this probably helps a lot. And now it you does. can easily mark it without we having to. We evolved from hieroglyphics to the alphabet <laughs> system. <laughs> so congratulations. So the, that means steak is inside that. Is that what that means? Sure, steak and cheese. Ah, ah yes. Yeah. So now they're easy to tell apart when you have them in front of you and you don't have to decode any messages. I like that. It's perfect. Love it. All right, let's get started. Yeah, what what kind are we make? making today? Let's do it. All right, so because it's summer, I decided that we should make some margarita empanadas, which is a mozzarella basil tomato, mm -hmm. okay. a nice fresh flavor. Right. Um, so and I'm giving start? away one of my secrets. Oh, oh so good. We won't in tell. Order, <laughs> <laughs> so in order for the cheese to remain uh, fluffy inside the empanada, I use a sauce called bechamel. It's one of the French yes. mother sauces, which is what we're actually making right here, right now. Okay. So what I have here is a tablespoon and a half of butter. Okay. And uh, we're making a roux, oh. which is butter and flour. And uh, we're going to melt the butter. Once it's fully melted, we're going to add a tablespoon and a half of flour. Okay. And, and do you uh, put this as part of the cheese sauce in any of the empanadas with cheese? Every one that has mozzarella has a little bit of bechamel. Okay. And once we get to actually mixing the filling, then you'll see why. Okay. okay. Uh, but in the meantime, That's we're going to let a great little this trick. <coughs> yeah, yeah, this is, this is a big delicious. secret, you guys. Mm -hmm. So while we let this cook for a second. And how uh, come it's not burning? Uh, I have it at medium heat, okay. so we don't want high heat. We just want it to toast a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to cook the flour out because we don't want to taste the flour. Oh, you know. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some fresh tomatoes, and we're going to have you guys help me dice them. So go ahead and is take out. Is there any specific <laughs> way you want me to do this? <laughs> um, just take out that little bit, that bless little you. triangle in the top. Okay. And then <coughs> Excuse uh, me. I'm allergic to Oh, no. I'll dice it. Yeah, here, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. So just take out that middle bit, and then you're going to dice them <laughs> at about, this is the size that I started. So it's just a little, a little dice, because what you're doing is making bite-sized pieces. Okay. Right. When and you make empanadas, you want every, go ahead and slice it, like in big slices. And for and the sake of time, it. I'm going to step in and do the basil. Great. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now with basil, we do a trick called chiffonade. Yes. So you take the whole basil oh, and you put this. it in a little so you're rolling yeah. it mm -hmm. you roll it you roll it yep so then when you dice that was a great chip okay you just do that okay so we have our basil and our tomatoes let's go ahead and do some mixing yeah. i'm doing a large dice over here just that's so okay that. now this fresh basil is great yeah so it's like yeah. ribbons of basil okay so, I'm so you go ahead in. and you put it in yep um and so this is pretty much this filling right here. Okay. It's, it's all very just fresh ingredients, you know. All right. That's well, so, the point. So we get a chance to roll. I'm going to keep pushing of forward course, here. Of I know course. we're cheating a little yes. bit. Okay. Because I don't want to miss So now you're just adding a little milk. Yeah, I'm adding a milk. This is about a cup right here. Now this bechamel sauce, you want to make it in advance. You definitely okay. maybe oh. a couple hours before or even the day before. So it cools. Okay. Right, right. Is this it? That is it. Okay. Now this, Magic I of made television. this last night, right? So this is very thick, and that's on purpose. Right. Okay. Right. So, so teach us how we stuff. All right. Go ahead and pass me the mozzarella, please. Here you are. All right. So we have the tomato, the basil. Let me take some of your tomatoes because sure. we're going to need that too. I got okay. More. Push this off to the edge. Everybody's got some. And Bill Beth, yeah. will you pass down the outside oh, wrapper yeah, for us? Go. 
want me to keep going? I can go oh. somewhere. Oh, that's perfect. Go ahead and throw okay. those in. Perfect. All right. All right. So now you can see the fresh basil, fresh mozzarella. It's very aromatic. All right. Now we have some. All right. We mix and in the cheese. And then you just mix all yeah, that mozzarella. together. Yeah. I'm coming back now that it's time to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, smart. I did all the work and now yeah, Linda comes back. All right. Time. All right. Will you show us how to roll one yeah. in the final seconds here? All right. Sure. We're mixing in the we're white sauce. We're mixing in the white sauce. This is very important. I see how it was all very loose. I do mm -hmm. see that. Now remember, you can find empanadas by Steph both at the Sarasota Farmer's Market on Saturdays all and right. at their storefront with pepperonata pasta. And I recommend that. Yeah. I okay. recommend you find her. She knows Take what she's one. doing. All right. All right. I just put it in. Show me how much to put in here. She's lucky and has a fancy machine to do all this, <laughs> complete with initials all right, on the there side. There you go. You don't want to put a lot. All right. Thank you, Steph. Great to see you, Megan. <laughs> Take some time and enjoy the Suncoast view. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you.